All right, David Harry here. So in this video, I'm going to be answering that burning hot question that is on the lips of everybody out there, which is, which codec is the faster to encode with H.265 or ProRes when you are specifically using the Apple Media Encoder engines on a MacBook Pro M1 Max, and you are doing that from within inside DaVinci Resolve Studio. Yes, that's definitely the question that everybody wants to know the answer to. Anyways, two quick things before I dive into this test. So the first thing is, this particular video is not actually my idea. What it is, this is something that got mentioned in one of the comments to one of my videos by someone called Cotton. Now, hopefully I have pronounced that correctly and I've not butchered whatever it is that name is supposed to say to me. It reads as Cotton. Anywho, me and Cotton have been doing some kind of like discussing in some of the comments on some of my videos recently and cotton actually came up with something along the lines of which of these two things is the faster the h265 or the prores from the media engines hence why i'm going to do this video now just quickly on this point as well one of the reasons why me and cotton have been having so many exchanges within the comments section to some of my videos is because of the shenanigans that elgato have been getting up to recently by basically lying and trolling and giving misinformation to Apple Silicon users who are going to be buying the Elgato 4KX HDMI 2.1 capture card. Now, there's going to be some links in the video description below. I strongly recommend that you go and watch that if you've come across this video, because of course, this type of geeky video is only really going to be useful to a very small amount of people out there. And that small amount of people are going to be people who are using Apple Silicon, the doing video encoding and capturing stuff like that. In which case, you will definitely want to know about all of this BS that Elgato have been getting up to with their new capture product, which is supposedly compatible with Apple Silicon, but isn't. Now, the second point to make here is that this video is all about speed testing. It has absolutely nothing to do with file size or picture quality. So to be clear, it is a speed test video and I will not be showing the differences between the file sizes or the picture quality differences with the outputs here. And the main reason why is because it's got nothing to do with it being a speed test. And don't forget things such as picture quality and file size are going to change on a case by case basis anyways. So they are very unique to the encoding session that you're doing. So basically things like your input resolution and also your frame rate, along with certain parameters that you may or may not use for the outputs are gonna change these things quite drastically anyways. However, I will do stuff about those types of things in future videos and I've already done stuff like that in previous videos. Anywho, on with this video. Okay, so here I am on my MacBook Pro M1 Max and I'm inside DaVinci Resolve. But let me just show you a couple of things here first. So I've got this folder on the desktop of my computer here, which obviously means it is on the internal SSD for the MacBook here. And inside there, I have got this file, which is AVI YUV 42210 bit. Now this is actually the source file that I'm going to be using for doing the encoding codes from. So importantly, this is on the internal drive and the internal drive for this particular Mac is way, way faster than the necessary bitrate required to play this file in real time. Although depending upon how fast we can read the file, any drive will become a bottleneck at some point, but it most certainly won't do that for real time ability here. Now, if I then go to this external drive, which is a Thunderbolt 4 SSD, which has got an average write speed of around 2,800 megabytes per second, there's a folder here, which is called XXX export test. That is where I will be putting the export files to. So importantly, the thing that I'm pointing out here is that there will be no bottleneck necking for reading and writing of the files being used in the test as both the read and the write are occurring on different SSDs. Okay, so let me just go back into Resolve here. Let me just go full screen. Now, just in the timeline quickly, we'll have a quick look 
at the attributes for this clip here so as you can see it says uncompressed yuv 42210 bit 59.94 frames per second and it is 4k uhd just a quick point when it says uncompressed there that's basically talking about uncompressed to do with the bit rate it obviously is not uncompressed to do with the color because it's obviously got a chroma subsample on it but nonetheless this is 10 bit 422 and it's an avi file now the reason why i've chosen this and made it an avi file is because although this is going to be super easy to read in the timeline for the mac it's definitely not going to be a file which can be assisted with like the apple like you know media engines so for instance if this were prores or h264 or h265 the media engines would actually assist in reading them and that could actually throw up some quite odd results depending upon what the source was and what we're exporting to so what i've chosen here is a codec which is super easy for the mac to read so it's going to be like way past real time for reading it and then passing it through to the encoders but it's not a codec which will be unfairly dealt with as far as the media engines are concerned so that's just the basics of what's going on there and then if we have a quick look on the timeline here i mean watch this so that is just like for want of a better phrase or something that everyone always says that is beyond buttery smooth so that just really is not an issue for this mac to read and run through and stuff like that so what i'm going to do now is flip over onto the exporter so with inside the exporter here i've already kind of got this set up quickly for what i want so first of all i'm going to do h.265 as we can see it's going to that folder there on the external thunderbolt drive xxx export test unfortunately i don't get very creative with my naming structures anywho as we can see here it's quicktime h.265 i'm using the hardware accelerator because that's the whole point of the test it's 4k or 4k uhd 59.94 frames per second now i've got the quality on automatic it does not matter what bit rate is used here if it's a low bit rate or super high bit rate it does not impact on the actual time taken so i'm just leaving it on automatic plus also this has got nothing to do with picture quality this is speed not to do with picture quality or size it's strictly a speed test now what it is there's an option here to optimize for speed i've got that unticked but i will switch that back on shortly so we can see what difference that makes anyways first off i'm going to main 422 10 bit oh also i'm not going to do multi-pass either because that obviously is going to be longer and then when i compare it to prores the prores encodes will not be multi-pass either so like i say 422 10 bit so in fact let me just give that a name that's meaningful main 422 10 bit okay so main 422 10 bit okay so i'm just gonna add that to the queue here now i'm just gonna go straight into exporting it also as well i think i probably will have mentioned this file here is exactly one minute long so that's gonna help us just to kind of like you know equate times and stuff because if something's one minute long and we get an idea of what one minute takes to do like you know a particular encode then obviously we only have to multiply that by so many times for, like for other minutes worth in order to understand or to know how long it's going to take to do other types of like lengths for the same type of resolution and frame rate and don't forget this is 4k 60 effectively or 4k 59.94 as you can see here that took 37 seconds so obviously way faster than real time now don't forget if this were say 1080p 24 frames per second it'd be way way faster than that this is actually a measurement realistically of how many frames is actually being encoded within any particular second so obviously the higher the resolution and the higher the frame rate of the source material the longer it will take to encode now what i'm going to do here i'm going to drop this to main 10 and then i will then come back here and i'll just put this as main 42210 actually no that's wrong it's just main 10 it's actually 420 but i won't say 420 we've got the definition and the difference there in the name so what i'm going to do is hit render on that 
And what we should notice here is that other than maybe margin of error, this is going to be the exact same kind of length of time to do the encode. Now, if we have a look up here, there's our frames per second as it is encoding. And what we will see there, it's going to be hovering around 100. I didn't point this out on the previous encode, but that's going to be like, pretty much the same as what it was on the previous encode it'll probably fluctuate between like 99 to 102 something like that and um, now it's nearly at the end let's see what the difference is here in the encode time okay 36 seconds well i'm gonna say that that's just margin of error it might not even be a second in the difference there it might that might even be a quarter of a second you know what i mean but that's margin of error as far as i'm concerned now let's drop this down to main. So when it says main, that's just 8-bit. So it's 8-bit 420, by the way. So I'm gonna flip that over there, hit render. And what we're gonna notice is the frame rate being like, you know, being encoded up here is gonna be the same. It's gonna fluctuate probably anywhere between like, you know, 99 to 102 or something like that. And like I say, other than, you know, margin of error and stuff like that, these times are going to be literally the same regardless of what attributes that we use to like, you know, do the encode with as far as bit depth and chroma subsampling are concerned and such like. Okay, so this is coming up to its end here. So it's going to be around 36 seconds again. Let's see, there we go, 36 seconds. So that's the three ways we can immediately encode straight from here. So obviously we did main 42210, which is 10 bit with a 422 chroma subsample. Then we done main 10, which is 10 bit with 420 chroma subsample. And, and then we done main, which is basically 8 bit with 420 chroma subsampling. And as we can see, other than maybe a margin of error difference, they're exactly the same length of time. So regardless of what goes on here, here because we do have a specific engine as it were to encode these things that's the reason why there's no difference in those encode times and stuff because on other systems which are software based you would definitely get differences because of the complexity to do with encoding or not encoding for various bit depths and also chroma subsamplings as well anywho what i'm going to do just for like you know a bit of thoroughness here as it were I'm going to flip over to optimize for speed. Now I'm going to go back here to uh, main 42210. So I'll call this main 42210. Uh, I'll put speed on the end so I know what it is, or basically so I can actually add it to the queue without it being a conflict of names. Okay, so let me add that to the queue. Hit render on that. Now, of course, because this says optimize for speed, it will be faster. And we can see immediately up here, it's gone from around like 100 frames a second up to like 160 odd frames per second. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that optimized for speed actually does. Just give me one second, hold on. But the time of it is only 22 seconds. So that's 22 seconds compared to 36 seconds, say. Now, like I was just saying, I don't know what optimized for speed does. Um, I don't think it does anything like um, like I frame or sorry B frame B frame reduction or anything like that. Although it might have certain things to do with like the pyramid scheme used or the trellis factor and stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure, but it definitely is faster. So in order for it to be faster, it has to have lessened on something. Now that's just going to give us a really quick indication as to what that speeds like. Like I say, this is not a quality or visual test it's just a speed test so i'm not going to get into comparing what they look like that's something for another video however i can almost guarantee that if we were to run at low bit rates choosing optimize for speed will result in a lesser quality looking video compared to one that wasn't optimized for speed once we hit low bit rates once we're at high bit rates a lot of all of these like parameter differences that we could be using within the encodes for the likes of h265 and h264 they probably don't really come into play once the bit rates are really high. It's only realistically when we're using like ultra low bit rates where some of the parameter changes make a huge difference with inside, you know, the H.264 and H.265 parameter sets. Anywho, what I will do is then change this to main 10. So I'll call that one 
main 10 speed let me add that over start that render now this is likely to be around 22 seconds again like i say margin of error it might be 21 or 23 but these will just be margin of error uh, calculations these are all identical when the source setting is the same set for either optimized for speed or not optimized for speed and so we're at the end here and 22 seconds okay so what i'm going to do is do my third one here which is just main so obviously this is 8-bit 420 but with the speed setting on let me add that over and let's just start that rendering now obviously the difference between 8-bit 420 and 10-bit 422 is quite substantial as far as the amount of data and whatnot is concerned color data and bit depth and stuff like that however as was shown here it doesn't matter what we select the speeds are all identical given whether it's optimized for speed or not and on the point of not opt or on the point of optimized for speed here that's 22 seconds so all three encodes identical speeds they're 22 seconds so absolutely no difference whatsoever now get to the interesting thing let's go to prores now so obviously we now understand where we're up to as far as the h.265 encodes are concerned and they are very impressive we're either at around 100 frames per second encoding for this 4k 60 fps file or up to around 160 depending upon whether we use like you know the speeded version or not as it were however when we go to prores let's see what happens here so for prores i'm first going to go for 422 hq so let me just call that prores 422 hq i think that's everything done there that needs to be done let me just add that to the queue and then i'll hit render now let's have a look up here and boom <laughs> look at that over 300 frames per second there it's leveling out at two high oh it's around 300 frames and it's done right 12 seconds <laughs> okay so immediately what we can see here is this like the the input file is super easy for the mac to handle so therefore it is passing it into the encoder as fast as it can which means that the encoder can work as fast as it can as well so what we're clearly seeing here is that the prores encoder engine is faster than the h.265 encoder engine and don't forget they are both hardware assisted encodes here um, i don't know what's the exact same chip on the sock that does it or it might be like two separate encoders which just get amalgamated into being called one engine but nonetheless as we can see here super fast for both of them however prores is like well basically more than twice as fast depending upon what setting we use for h.265 now let me just do a couple of other quick ones here for prores in fact let's go for the highest one here so this is going to be four 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 xq now, let me just explain what this is quickly because by the time i've done the encode i won't be able to talk fast enough during the encode right so what this is is basically uncompressed picture now it's got four 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 that last four basically is an indication that it's and it's got an alpha channel embedded into it not that we would be like bothered about that right now but nonetheless what we've got here is completely uncompressed color so no chroma subsampling going on it's obviously prores now xq just indicates that this is actually a higher bit rate than normal 4444 top of my head i can't remember what the bit rates are but they are super high end bit rates or super high bit rates anyway this is about the best or highest possible quality we can do with prores in fact it is okay so what i'm going to do now is add that to the queue now just remember it, it took 12 seconds to do the prores 422 hq so let's see what happens here now i'm going to has the guess this is probably going to be about the same time and um, give or take a second which will be you know just like hold on we're doing nearly there shut up dave boom 13 seconds right that that extra second in there is just margin of error i can guarantee you that these are identical timings and stuff now rather than just like go through every option here i will go now for the lowest option which will be 
422 proxy so we've done 42 hq which is probably our standard prores codec so that's going to be like you know the the highest bit rate for 10 bit 422 we've then done the highest possible bit rate and like you know color information which is 444 xq now what we're going to do is do 422 proxy now i can't remember whether 422 proxy is 8 bit or 10 bit but regardless this is the lowest of the options that we've got here so we've done like the, the average medium we've done the highest and then this will be the lowest so let me just rewrite that so four two two proxy okay that'll do for that now let me just pop that over there let me render that again this is going to take 12 to 13 seconds so even though technically it is not as good a codec it won't matter it's not going to do it any faster let's just have a quick look here there we go 12 seconds okay so what i was just saying there is that although 422 proxy is the lesser codec compared to all the other ones there to do with prores it's not like it'll do it any faster again we've seen the same thing when we were doing h.265 there as long as we are within inside the same codec and we're, we're basically just doing like you know variations between bit depth and like you know the color range or color sampling and stuff like that we're effectively getting the exact same speeds and the reason why is because the hardware encoder doesn't care about all the extra information it has got like basically preset routines to accelerate um the encoding so as opposed to a software encoder which would get all freaked out depending upon or depending upon things to do with like bit depth and chroma sampling and stuff like that because these hardware encoders are designed to do this they don't care they just see the file and go okay i know what you want it's prores what type of flavor do you want and here you go and the same thing for h.264 and h.265 now i didn't bother doing h.264 because it's more likely h.265 would be used for most output scenarios where we need you know a highly compressed video using like ipb frames or temporal compression anywho boss Bottom line here is this ProRes is faster for encoding compared to H.265 when it comes to the Apple media encoders on a, well at least on a MacBook Pro M1 Max using DaVinci Resolve Studio so thank you very much to Cotton for asking this particular question because yeah I've enjoyed doing the test and it's given me a really good insight and hopefully it has been good for other people out there if so please do give the video a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome I'm David Harry, thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.